Hi everybody and welcome to Anacortes, Washington. The Anacortes Ferry heading out to the San Juan Islands. Scouting today with a friend, backcountry Gary Paul, right there. So I met Gary in Marysville and uh, we jumped in Old Whitey and we're heading up here and thinking about possibly doing a video program for the Nick on the Rock series. So like I did in Potholes Cooley, today we're just brainstorming ideas for potentially a show in this area and we'll be talking directly to Brady Lawrence, who's the videographer. Thanks for joining us, let's get started. Gary, thanks for joining me today. It's fun to be out here with you. I'm, I'm not in the desert, man. I know, and we're in the bright sun of the uh, rain shadow of the Olympics, I think. Totally. So it's pouring rain to the south and the east. Yeah, yeah, we lucked out for at least a little window here for sure. So we're capturing this before maybe we lose the sun. I, um, what's the name of this park here? This, yeah. This is the Cap Sante Park. And it's, uh, as you can see, right next to uh, Anacortes here on Fidalgo Bay to the south and the big oil refinery over here. Wow. So yeah. as I'm looking to the oil refinery, where I'm, what are my bearings here? Am I looking south or southeast maybe? Yeah, I think that's southeast. Okay. Um, and you're no expert. You don't live in Anacortes. Like, you know, so... I barely know where we are here. Yeah, we're, we're both tourists basically. <laughs> But you suggested this is a place that we start, and we might start the episode here. Uh, what were your thoughts? Like this is an establishing shot, basically, to get a, a decent view of Anacortes itself? I, I was thinking an establishment shot, and looking to get the context here with Anacortes and Fidalgo Island, which is kind of, uh, it's one of the San Juans, yeah. really. Yeah. And uh, I think we're gonna maybe go out in the woods there in the background in Washington Park. There's a... Uh, an ophiolite sequence out there, which is kind of cool. I like, do you know what kind of trees these are? I, I like this, this almost looks Hawaiian to me here. I know it's not, but like. Yeah, it's, it's uh, got quite a nice grove of uh, madrona here. Madrona, thank yeah. you. So and those that know this area and you've been to Anacortes mainly to get on the ferry, I assume that's right around the corner to the right? Yeah, the ferry's just right over, um, you can't quite see it. Oh, but, okay, disappearing off in that direction, yeah. got it. And right underneath the eagle. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's always an eagle for, uh, for reference. So we're heading to Washington Park, which is a city park as you understand it? Right, Okay. and it's just on the, uh, would be kind of the northwest tip of Fidalgo Island. Okay. And we could drive onto this, so we're on an island, but we, we just we drove onto this as opposed to taking the ferry. And so this, I mean, I don't know, just like pulling in here, we've got beautiful glacial grooves on this exposure. What else would we do here? We, we, there's no real sexy look to the bedrock here, I don't think. No, there? I think it's kind of a... It looks like kind of a coarse sandstone, and I, yeah. I believe it's part of uh, the Decatur terrain, but not okay. positive. Okay, yeah. But I, I'm pretty sure the glacier, it looks to me like it came from either this way or it came from that way. <laughs> and I'm, I'm gonna go that it probably came more from where the North Pole is, which is over that way. Well, that's our first choice, maybe, as we as we workshop a few ideas for this episode. Is this a bedrock episode entirely? Almost for sure it is, but I don't know. If we keep seeing this fluted landscape and that this bedrock is so beautifully sculpted by the ice, which is, and, and there's even striations to show the direction that the ice was flowing, I don't know. Maybe it's worth including that in this episode. Is that... Brady, I don't know if that's too schizophrenic to be talking about the Ice Age and uh, Cretaceous bedrock in the same episode. No, but we'll just give you a few more shots of this outcrop. And uh, we're not in the desert today, that's for sure. It feels great to be... This is a three-hour drive for me, uh, leaving the house at 6.30 this morning. And... Uh, yeah, we're already starting to lose the sun a bit, but man, what a spot. 
Anything else pop out in your mind, Gary, besides just, yeah, this is gorgeous. Well, there's, uh, I mean, if it was a little bit more clear, we would be seeing Mount Baker. We'd be seeing the Sisters Range over here, hmm. which uh, makes it just to add a lot of complexity to the story because there's just a lot going on between here and there. I know. But visually, that would, I mean, if, <laughs> if we're flying a drone here, uh, and we get shots of the Cascades looming over this. Glacier Peak visible also, if we're getting greedy or not from here, do you I think? I don't think so. Okay. Wow. What's the name of this park again? Uh, this is Cap Sante Park. Cap I think Sante. That, I think that's how it's pronounced. Okay. I mean, one of the cool things that I learned, I think it was from, from Ralph Hagerud with his studies of uh, glacial morphology and yeah. stuff of... Uh, the Puget Sound area was that there's uh, multiple different angles to striation oh. that went on because the ice pushed south, straight yeah. south okay. initially, and it also was going out to the Straits, through the Straits of Juan de Fuca, the north end of the Olympic Peninsula. And apparently what happened is when that ice started rapidly retreating, so it was wound up floating out here in the water initially, and then you had very rapid retreat back inland and then all of a sudden for the ice, the Puget Lobe, downhill was no longer south. Downhill was suddenly heading west. What the heck? And so the uh, direction of striations, there's an overprint of striations that are kind of heading west, southwest from huh. here as the ice started going in the da new downhill direction. I thought that was pretty cool. Well, yeah. Well, that's not when you were a student at the University of Washington. That was more recently. You're just reading a report of his or something, or were you out in the field? With yeah, that? I was at a. Uh, he did a, a lecture for me. I can't remember when that was. It was a few years ago. Not for me. I oh, went God. to. <laughs> Showed up at your house. <laughs> that, that's been great, but I got some other things I need to talk to him about. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't. Oh, that's weird to me. Interesting. Of course, Brett's must have been right here. I bet. He must have come here. Him and Fanny. Yeah. 1908, whatever. Well, yeah. this is a winning shot. I mean, thank you. Yes, this has to be the beginning. Rounded over, I need a better word. Beveled, smoothed out. Everything's like... Sculpted butter. Sculpted butter. Sculpted butter. But even the ridges uh, above town have that beveled surface. Well, and then uh, in the background here is Mount Erie. And I know the top of Mount Erie also has uh, been well rounded off. Yeah. Well, we did a nick on the rocks up there. We, we propped Daryl Cowan up there on the high point. <laughs> and he was such a natural on camera. And so there's concern that we're overlapping with a prior Nick on the Rocks episode, but that was the Deception Pass episode. Deception Pass is over the, over the hill, I guess. And so we were focusing on the church, and we were focusing on Baja, B.C., and I don't think we're doing that here. I think we're... Where am I, Gary? Am I in Iceland or something? What the hell? This is, like, lit up perfectly right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Should have got Brady up here today. He's, he's sleeping in. I don't think he's even awake yet. Is he a night guy? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, that was you. <laughs> <laughs> well, the long, low one over here is uh, Guamus Island. Okay. And then back behind is Lummi. And I believe straight across is uh, Cyprus. And then uh, Orcas and Mount Constitution in the background. And I think this is all mostly like uh, Shaw and Lopez over to the uh, west. So unclear if this is going to be a good spot for us to film. But what did you, what did we bring here, Gary? Let's see. Well, we have a field guide from field trip guide from Dave Tucker. Thank you. And his geology underfoot in Western Washington book. Yes. And. Roadside Geology of Washington by Cowan and Miller. You gotta love it.
So the basic message here is that these green rocks that weather to a deep orange are part of an ophiolite suite, a collection of ocean rocks that I think we might have better outcrops to show the details. But we're highlighting these yeah, rocks of weird. Fidalgo Island. And the Anacortes Ferry Terminal is just out of sight there to the right. Mm -hmm. Gary, at the 101 level, how would you explain this whole collection of rock here oh. in Washington Park? Um, well, I guess what I would say is an ophiolite sequence is, is supposed to be a, a kind of a, it's a slice out of the crust of the ocean that yeah. originated at mid-ocean ridge. Yes. And for us here, somehow or another, that's been rotated up, probably faulted and folded a bit so that the bottom layer is... Uh, maybe peridotite or serpentinized, mm -hmm. some dunite for, from the uh, upper crust, yeah. which fades then into a gabbro, which fades into a basalt, which then is the ocean floor, which then gets a bunch of mud on top of it. And all that stuff got smushed together someplace, right. maybe halfway to Mexico for all we know, <laughs> maybe all the way to Mexico. Maybe all the way. And, uh, made a migration up this way 85 to 60 million years ago or something like that. Well, do I it learned it from a video I watched on YouTube. <laughs> so I think if we're emphasizing a suite of rocks, meaning that there's more than one look to the bedrock here that all work together as this thing, is a, as it's called an ophiolite package or an ophiolite suite, that would be the goal. Like we would have three different stops on this loop road and we'd have pillar basalts on one, uh, peridotite on the second, like all these different things that are from the mantle. I don't know if we're gonna get that. Like, I think we mainly just get the mantle piece here in okay. Washington Park. All right. And we got a darn oyster catchers are coming after us here. I hear them, I don't see them. Yeah, they're crafty. Well, what a pleasant morning. It's nicer than uh, Snoqualmie Pass was, I'm sure, coming over. Snowing on Snoqualmie. End of days rain in Everett. Sun in Anacortes. There's a bunch of sparkly stuff in here. I don't know what the... It kind of looks like a mica, but... Well, I'm starting to get a little nervous because I can hear Brady going, okay, it's green rock, but I need more to work with than just a bunch of green rock. Like, give me something specific that we can feature. And I wonder if we're going to get that. That's going to be a challenge, I think. Yeah, we might have to look into our guidebooks more th yeah, thoroughly. Yeah, let's do that. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so there's a greenish tint, otherwise you would just think it's a bunch of basalt. What do you think it is? It's very fine grained. Fine grained. I don't know, I'll be obvious, or I'll be, I guess, transparent with the viewers here. I'm just wondering if we have enough detail in these rocks to make it work for this episode. I mean, it's one thing to have them be green and iron rich and haven't, we can see the orange nature. They're heavier than normal, but I mean, how can we make this work for a general audience and how, just saying they're green rocks that, that they're from the ocean floor. I mean, we kind of already did that with the, the, shucks and green schist show and that green we're spoiled now that green you took us to on white chucks 
That was too green. No. <laughs> Too green and green, too. envious, enviously green. Yes. So the setting gets high marks, and the glaciation so far gets high marks with the first stop. Well, I think this whole bench right here, as it's sloping up, is all polished. I suspect if we looked around, we might even find some polished slabs up here in the right. grass. Yeah. The rocks of Fidalgo Ophiolite consist of five main types, each plainly visible along the island's roads. Peridotite, with a lot of olivine and pyroxene minerals inside from the Earth's mantle. Gabbro, an extrusive igneous rock. Plagiogranite, the type of granite that's dominated by plagioclase feldspar. Greenstone, metamorphosed basalt. And gray wacky, sedimentary rocks deposited on top of the ophiolite. I don't know, Gary. We are here on this point at Washington Park. We have permission to film here? Uh, we will. Yeah. You've made contact with somebody? Yeah. Okay. Um, what do you think? Am I am I too pessimistic about this rock? Hmm. You really well, I like I like it, but <laughs> I think it's cool. This is a, holding on to a little little piece of the upper mantle here. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't. Is that enough? Do we need to go find some gabbro Maybe on the we'll road cut? And Maybe we do. some other dirt, or we can look at more of the uh, glacial stuff. I think it's interesting looking across over to Cypress. You can see the dirt over there on the south side, which I presume is probably till from the Puget Lobe. As it's coming over the hill, it's dropping a load kind of on the uh, downstream end. Yeah. And then right here, there's none. It's all clearly. Uh, yeah. smoothed off by the ice as it was coming right. heading south. Right. No glacial sediments mantling this, at least today. Not over here. Yeah. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. that stuff. Okay. Right A on... Diamic. Look at that. Okay, come on now. If we're here in the late afternoon and this surface lights up so right now it's 11 30 a.m but brady we might have a story here directly on this stuff from the age of the dinosaurs which is from the deep ocean we have this is almost planted it's almost too perfect we have glacial till and we have an enormous granitic erratic just like out Eastern Washington somewhere, like in the ginkgo forest. <laughs> yeah. And, okay, I'm getting excited. So this wasn't moved in here. I think it came right out of... It came right out of this bank. And so we can do something with... Um, okay, so now I am thinking that this is a ice and ocean floor story and just workshopping ideas. Now we have a thick batch of ice deposited sediment that was on top of this entire bench once upon a time, maybe not that long ago. We erode much of the till and glacial stones away, leaving this incredible plateau that's perfectly lit in the late afternoon sun. Drone coming through here as well. Keep the beach in it but keep the handrail out of it whatever but we can we can get in and talk about how this is classic till poorly sorted and brady likes to pan and then get a big surprise so we would start with something like this this is what till looks like oh, this little baby little baby little baby piece of granite thank you and then if we Ooh, zoom out yeah, it's like, well, there's, there's, 
there's more than babies that are in this glacial and classic erratic does not match the local bedrock I, I think I might spray paint on there do not move Gary watch your mouth oh Gary <laughs> we don't want anybody rolling that out of here between now and the time Brady gets here <laughs> even this vegetation anchored in the till pine trees lodgepole pine pine trees and not the madrona does that matter i don't know no there's probably madrona around here somewhere right yeah okay this can work we're juxtaposing two major geology stories in one place I just was starting to get worried that there wasn't enough with the green rocks to really build an episode around it. And I'm still leaning that way. Yeah, coming around. Like we can't use hammers, but could we use a little trowel or something to Do get a clean one? face? Yeah, that's a pretty clean face that, back Over there. there, you're right. You're right. Yeah, Brady, what do you think if we have Ooh. glacial deposit? That's what you saw. Is that what Tucker had? You, you, were, you were wondering if there was yeah. a place where the till was right on yeah. the... and this is like right on the right on the tabletop here. It is. It's a deep ocean tabletop. It's a table made in the ocean. Oh, let's not get carried away. Same idea, Gary. How many places in Puget Lowland do you have till number one and then till directly on a bedrock surface? That also and is incredibly rare. Probably just north of Deception Pass and north, there'd be the opportunity. You go further south and very limited. The bedrock drops out of sight. Yeah. But in all your experience from here north, you can't think of other obvious places where these relationships are on display. Well, I, I don't know that I have that much knowledge of looking for these, but this is pretty obvious right here. I suspect over on um, some of the other islands you would find I something think. similar, but that involves ferry boats. Right. And this is just right here. It's right here, and till on bedrock is not a big story up in the Cascades, where that's your right. home turf, right. but this is an ice sheet. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm, yeah. So that's part of the episode, I think, is that, I don't know, unless we get a bunch of comments below on this video saying, oh, no, 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 it's common to find till from the Puget Lobe on bedrock. Unless people are saying that in the comments below, I think that's part of the episode, that this is... You know, some this really is nice, accessible, like, accessible spot thing. to see till plus the good fortune of finding a beautiful glacial erratic in the precise spot that the glacier left it. This is not an ice rafted erratic. This is not like the channeled scab lands. This is not some sort of iceberg being carried thousands of miles or hundreds of miles or even tens of miles. Well, probably more than tens from from here. That's got to have come from up in uh, probably from Canada. Yes, thank you. The coast plutonic complex looks like. But I've had ice age floods on the brain, and so I'm thinking of these right. these these erratics that many people know in eastern Washington, south of Mansfield. And like this is a totally different story. Yes, brought down from Canada, but brought down by the ice. That's what's exciting here. These are ice deposited stones as opposed to so many places in eastern Washington where it's it's not ice deposited. They're stones from the glacier, but they were 
floated in on water typically and over there. Don't you have some up on top of Steamboat Rock? You do. And Grand Coulee, but they're m much more rare than actual okay. uh, yeah. ice wrapped and erratics. So which... we're back to the challenge of comparing, uh, cramming stuff into a seven minute episode. But yes, in general, what other places in all of the Pacific Northwest have this situation? Yeah, top of Steamboat Rock, presumably had a bunch of this as well as this. We're just left with that up on top of Steamboat. Oh yeah. You might okay. have to walk down the beach here a little ways. Yeah. There might be some more of that stuff. Yeah, let's do it. So do you remember being a student at the University of Washington, Gary, in the 1970s? And Barely. On, on <laughs> Were you on glacial field trips, and where did you go if you were outside of... You are in the Puget Lowland. Do you remember classic continental ice spots? Well, I remember going out and looking at uh, some of the remains, which were very landslide-prone. Okay. Out in, uh, in Seattle, I, and mostly I remember going on uh, uh, field trips to eastern Washington, where you could see some of this stuff with uh, Larry Hansen. Larry Hansen. And he, he introduced a bunch of us to the plateau, dry falls, and uh, put us to work in Moses Cooley trying to figure out where that water might have come from. Well, I wish Larry was still with this because in the next few days, a brand new paper on Moses Cooley is going to show up oh, online boy. Oh, in the boy. Journal of Geology. And uh, it's building right on his work. Watch for agates out here. All right. More erratics. So there must be a little name for this beach at Green Point. Maybe it's just called Green Point Beach. But I think we have our featured spot for this episode. Unless Brady talks us out of it, I think that's what we're going to do. We could even feature these. They're all Ooh, yeah. They're all weathered out of that There's chill. There's a nice one. Oh, here's that bench again. Interesting. Look at like how it just starts emerging right here. <laughs> yeah, that even this could be featured like this is marbles at the beach, but the marbles have all I think that's accurate to say they're they're yeah. just shifted out or, or winnowed out of this till as opposed to be carried from a long way away. I gotta be careful with my words. Oh my God, we got striations too. Gorgeous. It's all slick and oh my God. Now that's interesting. Look at this. Which way is it going? What's over there? So this. Yeah, then it's got some more light on it in the afternoon. That would be maybe pretty cool. Worse. I don't know. Like this, uh, from the vantage point I've got it, the thing is just glistened. These are gl glacial striations. Beautiful. Oh, it it continues all the way oh, over here. Really? Okay. Well, this is a surprise. I didn't anticipate today that we would develop 
much of this episode around the Pleistocene. Here's a shot. Okay, I don't have to work as hard to get excited now. So bottom half of the frame, more than 100 million year old, ocean floor, Ooh. part of a seafloor spreading center. Oh yeah. Part of a suite of green rocks. There's sweet green rocks. That have all sorts of details within them. And your eye is drawn to that, of course. But I think what we're saying is that the, I know what I'm saying, is that the upper half of this is a totally different chapter. And there's an unconformity. This bench represents more than 100 million years of time that's missing. Ooh. If you're confused with what we're doing in this video, can I remind you if you forgot the first part? This is Backcountry Gary Paul and I, and we are just out brainstorming ideas for a potentially new Ooh. episode for the new season of the PBS series called Nick on the Rocks. And the format is these episodes are about seven or eight minutes long. Okay, see, yeah. Ooh, this one. Yeah. Oh, there's more. That, that just lights up. Yeah. And it's bumpy. <laughs> I've never seen this before. I've seen striations, but they're kind of high and dry. Or I've seen striations and they're in some sort of artificial quarry wall or something. This is, the context is what's different here. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, you get the right light on that. Yeah. That's going to stay wet too. In the So we can even speculate why the scratches are there. Are these, is the ice flowing over this surface and making the grooves? Doesn't make sense if you really think about it. Again, this is just Geology 101 stick. Instead, you're, you're, the ice is dragging rock. And how big are those rocks needing to be? <laughs> are they just as simple as these? Maybe I would have some different size stones from the till and just have them laid out here and like which which sizes are doing the, doing this damage. the scratching. Major accomplishment we didn't wipe out so far Gary. Yeah. A slick rock here. Speaking for myself. Oh, there's our ferry. Okay. <laughs> Get your thumb out we Gary. Got... <laughs> Take us around. <laughs> okay. Exciting. For lack of a better term, Greenpoint Beach. So I think if we open at, what was the name of the park again? Uh, Cap Sante. Cap Sante Park. And then snap our finger and we're here at Greenpoint Beach. We had no erratics at Cap Sante. We just had fluting. Oh, thank and we you. We had no till. Right. Right. Yeah, it could be more than the hook at that first episode. That, that backdrop's so great, and we could set up the fact that this is more common to have a fluted bedrock surface. But there's a spot on the other side of Anacortes. Let's go over there in the trees. And it's not only the fluted bedrock surface, but there's more of the Ice Age history there. Then we come here and see the till and the... Yeah, we didn't have the erratics over there. No erratics. There was, was... This thing's writing itself. Come on, man. Don't wipe out. Yeah, don't wipe out. Don't wipe out. This episode brought to you by Hoka's. Hoka. Ooh. The ugliest shoes on the planet. But they keep you upright. You want to pass that down? 
Which way is it looking? At so you. Looking at me? Yeah. yeah, you're a photographer. How do I turn you around? Do I do, oh, there we go. I got to do that. Oh, wow. Look at these slide, slipping and sliding his way down here. <laughs> okay, Hoka's made it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, a little comedy sketch there. Yeah, I, I love this right here. This, the, I, I don't know if this is the better spot for the till. It might be just to see the t the total thickness of it. I think we're going to have to watch the tides a little bit oh, out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm feeling much better, Gary. Oh, that's good. I don't know if you're feeling... There's always something. Well, I can see the episode now. I guess that's the point. Couldn't really see it before. And look at all these little erratics down here. Multicolored erratics. Well, that's a whole other way to say it, right. Like, everybody goes collecting for agates and beautiful beach rocks, but if you can plug these little marbles, how confident can we be that these marbles are from here? Like, I, and I gotta, I gotta care, be careful with my language here. So like, I'm saying that some of these are from the till, so they didn't move very far. And yet the till has stuff that was moved across the border, words, yeah. essentially. Yeah, so they got to be like there's like two stories here. There's the till being the rocks in the till were moved from Canada. But then the other excitement is that possibly I don't know how controversial it is to say that these stones are from Canada. But they didn't come here in this form from Canada. They came. That's the form that they came in by the ice and then they've just been set free to wash in the tidal zone we're just playing with verbiage here but yeah everybody knows this experience <laughs> must be lunchtime yeah it must be lunchtime with backyard gary that's what Hannah Shamlo oh. calls you, by the way. You're oh, back, backyard. backyard, Gary. Well, today it's backyard or front country. <laughs> Tuesday at mm -hmm. noon. Why aren't we filming today, Brady? Perfect. Well, it's supposed to rain tonight, tomorrow, so I guess I guess that's the answer. What's, this, what's it, this point? Did you? It is raining over there. Is it? Well, we're at uh, Juniper Point in Washington Park. I know this island over here is Burroughs Island. Small island. Gary provided lunch. What kind of cheese are we talking about? I think it's Munster. Munster? Yeah, from the old country. And? Personally grilled flank steak. Flank steak. Gary Paul. Thank you. <laughs>